How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to assemble the cylinder heads, top end, and valve train on our 1800 horsepower standing mile 427 LS. In part one of this series, Shay and I fully assembled, blueprinted the short block of this powerhouse combination. A quick recap if you haven't seen it, it's running a billet center counterweighted four inch stroke LS crankshaft with Oliver billet 6125 I-beam connecting rods, JE Ultra 2618 forged pistons with 200 thou wall thickness H13 tool steel wrist pins. The super cool gold coating is a thermal barrier because this engine needs to make about 1800 horsepower and it could potentially have to make that power for almost 30 seconds at standing mile top speed run events. We are also running a billet three stage daily dry sump engineering system. And we're gonna to top it off with our Smetting 260 cc, 11 degree, six bolt cylinder heads. These heads come standard with a special alloy exhaust valve, so it'll have no issues making that much power and generating that much cylinder pressure and heat for that extended duration. So, step one, we're gonna bolt the heads onto this beast, measure push rods, so that way we can custom order them and then finish the valve train. With our six bolt, 11 degree cylinder heads installed, now we are going to find the push rod length for this type of valve train with these lifters. We actually just came out with an updated version of how we like to measure the push rod length, which makes it way faster. So check out the rest of our content to see that method. And it looks like we'll have our lengths in just a second. And once we measure our lengths, we can then order the custom push rod from Smith Brothers. Once they come back in, this engine's basically done and ready to dyno. It is 12 to one compression, so naturally aspirated, it should still make, I think almost 700 horsepower, which is great because then he'll only need very low boost levels to make the kind of power he's trying to achieve. The general rule of thumb is whatever horsepower the engine makes naturally aspirated at 14.7 PSI, which is atmospheric pressure, that horsepower number should double. So if we make 700 horsepower NA, at about 15 pounds, this motor should be producing about 13 to 1400 13 to 1400 horsepower. It is just a rule of thumb, but it's pretty accurate. With the lifters we're running in this engine, which are Johnson axle oiling short travel lifters, we're going to run an 8.250 push rod on the intake and an 8.225 push rod on the exhaust. I'm going to get those ordered. They'll take about a week to get here, but for you guys, it'll be just one second. And just like that, push rods are in stock. So we had two different lengths. We had an 8.225 on the exhaust and an 8.240 on the intake. So we contacted Smith Brothers Push Rods. They got us a custom set. Because this engine is gonna see a lot of RPM for a long time, it's running a pretty heavy valve spring. And to match that valve spring, we're gonna run a heavy wall push rod to give us some more valve train stability. You always want the lifter side of the equation to be as stiff and stable as possible. Um, on this side of the rocker arm, we don't really care about how much components weigh. One, because they don't have to move as far, and two, because they're the first things getting acted on by the camshaft. On the valve side of the rocker arm, that's where we want things to be as lightweight as possible while still retaining structural rigidity. 
and because the rocker arm ratio, um, the valve side is going to travel much further distance, whereas as the lifter side doesn't move as much to actuate that rocker arm. I've got all my components ready to go. We are running our Smetting CNC ported aftermarket six bolt cylinder head, and we are going to run thread sealant on the intake runners. We pretty much do this on every single engine. Um, some ports break through, some ports don't, but for safety, we go ahead and run some anyways. So, let's put this motor together. Just like that, the long block for this 1500 horsepower turbo LS is complete. All I've got left to do now is pop on the intake manifold and the valve covers, and then we can hit the dyno. Really quick plug, we actually have our own LS steam vent kit. A couple things that make ours different from the other competitors is we use an O-ring swivel on the standoff. Um, a lot of the other kits, you have like this one billet piece that goes into the head, and then you've got this NPT elbow that you have to crank in and pray that you get it at the right angle. Um, ours just has an o-ring that swivels so it's always at the right angle. And then we also extended the actual outlet line. Um, some of the others they finish it way in here which once you put the intake on and most of you guys at this level are putting your fuel pressure regulator right here you can't even access it. So I made it just a little bit longer make it a little bit easier to work on the car and all in all, just a clean, tidy steam vent kit. There she is, all wrapped up. As far as conventional cylinder headed steel rod LS engines go, this is kind of it. This is as far as you can take it, as max effort as it gets, while still being hydraulic roller, of course. You know, billet dry sump, it's got a billet, six counter, eight counterweighted, center counterweighted crankshaft, billet all of our I beams, JE ultra pistons, huge wrist pins, super nice cylinder heads, half inch head studded. 2150 cc injectors and it is ready to go. Next time you guys see this engine, we're going to be on the dyno running it and seeing how it does. See y'all then.